If you've been flying the Magic Carpet recently, looking for a GPU under $300, you may be wondering what options can the market conjure up at this price point? And here's where in today's video, we're gonna be showing four different options that are very popular around this price point. And that is we've got the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. We've got the RTX 5060 8 gigabyte as well as the B580 12 gigabyte from Intel, where we're revisiting this card over six months later to see how it checks out against these newer options. And then lastly, we've got AMD's RX 9060 XT 8 gigabyte. And the thing about these cards is they are all coming under $300 at this point in time. Though in today's video, I'm gonna be critiquing all four of these cards in different ways, where we'll get the first critiques out of the way with for the 5068 gigabyte and the 9060 XT 8 gigabyte. I feel like these cards are just too powerful to have an eight gigabyte VRAM buffer. And this is the first time where I've come into these weird sort of issues with 0.1% lows and then having to get driver updates to make things work properly. But I feel like at this point in time, these cards are doing fine, but I feel like what's right around the corner for them, they might not be doing fine, especially if the game has just launched, there's a new driver for it, there's problems and it takes the driver team a few months to get their game patched properly and have it running fluid on an eight gigabyte model. However, then we go over to the B580 and that's not immune to its own critiquing as well. And in fact, I'm pretty disappointed with the B580 over six months later, where I feel like, and the easiest way to sum this up, is it's almost like Intel's basically, in my opinion, abandoned this card in terms of driver support. And what I mean by this is we'll start off with the gaming benchmarks here, going over Marvel Rivals first, because this is a popular multiplayer title. When I check the stats on Steam, there's over 100,000 concurrent players. And if we look at the numbers here, we can just see that the B580 is more or less performing around a 30, 60, 12 gigabyte, instead of competing with the 5060 or 9060 XT. Now keep in mind that B580 is 12 gigabytes of VRAM. It does have a healthier spec front when we look at the spec sheet, but in terms of performance, it is falling a well ways behind these other two cards that have just hit the market. However, we are just touching the tip of the iceberg. Let's get into more of these games right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't want to spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. For a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. They may be already saying, Brian, the B580 was meant to compete with the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. And here's where I'm gonna show you this next title because it's very important for me because I see Elden Ring Night Rain. This is a game that was intended mainly for console, but it was released on PC. And I think in this case, Nvidia, AMD, and also Intel, they've just said, well, this game's got a 60 FPS cap. We're really not gonna bother optimizing drivers for it because at max settings at 1080p and 1440p, you're really not gonna to have to do anything to get 60 FPS. But then if we go to 4K and we max those settings out, we do start to extract a difference on these cards that come under 300 bucks. And we can see here the B580 is competing right at the top now with the 5060 and also the 9060 XT. And in fact, it's beating the 9060 XT quite sizably. So when we break down Elden Ring Night Rain, we can see here that the B580, when no one else was optimizing their drivers for the game, the B580 is right at the top. And so if Intel got their driver team to optimize, at least for the really competitive multiplayer titles, I feel like they could be right around that performance of a 5060 and a 9060 XT, which then could change my recommendation to say, hey, this card is easily the best value at this price point. But then we look at a game like Fortnite, you can then get back into the driver optimizations from Nvidia and AMD, and you can see that it's a clobber fest for these two eight gigabyte cards over the B580 12 gigabyte, where that's performing pretty poorly. It's actually performing a lot closer to the 3060 12 gigabyte than it is the 9060 XT or the RTX 5060. And in fact, the 9060 XT 8 gigabyte does do pretty well in this title, scoring a sizable advantage over all the other options here. They're going to a newer title, Dune Awakening, recently released title. It actually had a lot of problems with the RTX 5060 in the form of stuttering, but the latest driver update seems to have fixed this stuttering at least at 1080p. And then moving on to the 9060 XT, it's pretty much neck and neck with the 5060 in this game. But then the B580 does fall considerably behind to levels 
of that of the 3060 12 gigabyte, which then goes back to the driver optimizations. We got the B580 having significantly better specs than a 3060 12 gigabyte, right? It's got much higher clock speeds. It's on better silicon. Still got the 192 bit bus. Still got the 12 gigabytes VRAM but then it's coming right around the same performance. Then moving on to Final Fantasy 16, the 9060 XT, 8 gigabyte does the best here at 1080p, 1440p, but then at 4K, the 5060 just slips on by there for a very slight victory. And then on to Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 at 1080p and 1440p, we can see a weird trend here where the 1080p results show the driver optimizations giving a clobbering with the 9060 XT and the 5060 over that of the B580. But then we step up to 4K, it starts to regain some of its ground again. But why is this? Well, at 4K, ultimately you've got lower FPS and that means lower draw calls in general, which we'll talk about after we get through the results here about what is exactly happening with the B580. But let's move over to Splitgate 2 a multiplayer title where I'm testing in multiplayer. So there is some variance with the numbers here, but I did retest the numbers for the RTX 5060 and it was a lot smoother in terms of 1440p and 4K numbers than it originally was, but the FPS was slightly low on the averages. However, ultimately this led to a playable experience on the 5060 as opposed to when I previously tested on older drivers, it was virtually unplayable. The 9060 XT 8 gigabyte did well here too, and the B580 did okay until we got to 4K, where it really started to stutter and have an unplayable experience. So again, back to needing driver optimizations more than ever to get games smoothed out and playing properly. The last title here we've got is Rift Breaker, and here is where we've got that trend slipping through once again for the B580, performing relatively poorly versus the 8GB models at 1080p, and then at 4K starting to claw back more of a gain here. So quickly going over some ray tracing numbers, driver update, again, fixed Dragon Age Origins for me personally, with the 5060 now being able to benchmark properly, but I did notice the ray tracing on results with the 5060, it was struggling more than I'm used to seeing it struggle with ray tracing results. So this game is very VRAM intensive, that eight gigabytes is struggling in this particular title. Though the B580 doesn't do too bad here, as well as the 9060 XT 8 gigabyte not doing too poorly. Going over to Black Myth Wukong, this game presents a massive tanking to FPS on any so GPU that wants to turn ray tracing on, but it does seem to do a lot worse on the B580 as well as the RX 9060 XT. The last thing to talk about with all four of these cards is the undervolting and the overclocking experience. And here is where all the cards do do very well in the undervolting aspect, and that is via either undervolting the 3060-12 gigabyte or the 5068 gigabyte via MSI Afterburner, or in the case of the AMD card, we can undervolt that with the adrenaline software. And then in the case of the Intel, it's actually not so much an undervolt as it is just more so uh, setting a power limit because whenever I try to undervolt this card, I'm having the same problems that I previously had when the card was first released. That is any custom settings I set in the curve in the Intel software, it just essentially resets and it, it's bizarre. And in the fact of overclocking on this card, you'll notice in the graphs too, that it just, there's no results there because every time I try to set the power limit higher, the card just crashed out completely. And this was with also no memory OC too. So the drivers over six months later for the Intel, it shows for me personally that it's almost, I'm not gonna say it's this bad, but it feels like it's this bad. It feels like an abandonment from the driver team in terms of the B580 and then really going into the software, optimizing it and fixing bugs. And it just feels like the bugs that I've looked at six months ago, over six months ago, are still present in the B580. And when we look at the popular multiplayer titles, it feels like they could do a lot more in terms of optimization, especially in these popular multiplayer titles to get the card really up to speed and just getting more FPS out of it, especially at lower resolutions like 1080p and 1440p. The 4K numbers, I don't think they have to worry too much because there's less DirectX draw calls there, but this is where it comes into why is the FPS lower at 1080p and 1440p versus 4K on the B580. And this comes down to ultimately DirectX over Vulkan. So essentially Intel's driver team is using the translation layer that Steam is using for the Steam OS to get a lot of their games to work over Linux versus say Windows, for example. And then Intel's decided to just take a quick and easy route for the driver optimizations by using this. And this is causing a lot of lower FPS at lower resolutions 
versus especially a 5060 and 9060 XT. The B580 is a classical case of it having the specs and it having good value, at least on face value, but then there's a lot more to it than just specs. And it goes to show that the drivers are very important for getting the performance you need. And this is also at least evidenced for me personally, where I've seen the 5060 go from being a bit unstable in some situations to now having those instabilities fixed, which is very good to see that Nvidia is getting on top of updating their drivers. But then we get to the 9060 XT8 gigabyte and the 5068 gigabyte. They're in a very similar field here in terms of recommendations. They're actually pretty powerful cards. I'm happy with the FPS. I'm just worried about the eight gigabytes of VRAM, which usually in the past, I'm not that worried about VRAM with cards, but this time around, I am worried about VRAM because I believe it's presenting potential for a lot of problems, especially when titles have just come to the market, you wanna play them, but then you've gotta wait potentially months for a proper driver update to fix those problems on the eight gigabyte models where those problems may not exist if you've got a bigger VRAM buffer. Though one thing I will pay particular attention to is the RX 9060 XT8 gigabyte. I feel for me personally, just using these GPUs on my test bench, running through the numbers, I feel like the 9060 XT 8 gigabyte did overall the best job. And I've noticed this with the RX 9000 series drivers in general, they have been very good for what they are, especially compared to my previous experience on Radeon GPUs. And that's why this time around, I'm more or less very impressed with AMD's driver team and considering they've got less resources available than Nvidia, they're really making things happen. Though looking at the 3060 12 gigabyte, we haven't talked about this much. It's an older card, but the thing it's got going for it is it's just got a lot of stability going for it. And of course you do get access to the DLSS upscaling, which you've also got on the 5060, but I feel like it's just more of a trusty option, especially if you can get it cheaper than the other three options here. It still is a decent card. I didn't really find anything wrong with it, but at the same time, the average FPS is significantly behind in a lot of titles versus the 5060 or the 9060 XT, for example. So now we're gonna to move to the RX 9060 XT8 gigabyte. And I, I'm gonna say forewarn, I did say that I was gonna critique a lot in this video about these cards. I feel like the eight gigabyte, the only problem here is the eight gigabytes. The 16 gigabytes, if you can pay that extra premium, you should definitely do it. It's gonna just give you a lot more peace of mind. It's gonna have, I guess, as we talked about before, if new games come out and there are driver instability issues, you're not gonna have that driver instability issues due to VRAM limits on the 16 gigabyte model. And so if you can get it, for instance, in Australia, where it's not that much more expensive, it's only literally 50 USD more expensive, I'd go for it. But the biggest problem is if we look at, say the US market, I can just show you in one slide. The problem here is, is it's coming in 100 USD more expensive for the 16 gigabyte model, which takes us back to the days of the 4060, I think it's TI, 16 gigabyte and eight gigabyte models where they were charging 100 USD more just openly on the MSRPs. But I'd like to see the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte return to its 350 price. And so with the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte, I feel like if you can stretch it that extra 50 bucks, you should. But then the problem is, is that depending on where you live, it can be priced $100 more too. So we've got pretty much problems with all four of these cards in today's comparison, but it's ultimately gonna be a case of looking at the games you play. And if you wanna go for an eight gigabyte card, are you willing to drop settings down and take the edge off the VRAM buffer? Because that's what you are feel going to have to do despite your GPU perhaps not being at 100% utilization, you're gonna probably have to do that going forward in a lot of games, especially newly released titles. Then finally, after all that, we're gonna to come to a conclusion where you're like, Brian, pick one. Pick a definitive winner in today's results. And here's where, I, this is the first time I cannot pick a definitive winner. Like this is the first time where I've looked at a comparison and usually there's one clear winner. I'd stick to one of the cards. Here this time around, it's pretty much the wild west of recommendations. And that is pick whichever is going to be the absolute cheapest if, by, if it's coming in by a big margin out of these four cards or then pick which one you can utilize the most. For instance, what games are you playing? Are you playing competitive online multiplayer titles? 
If so, I would look at the 5060 or the 9060 XT. Though on the flip side, you're gonna be playing less popular titles, maybe indie titles that don't really have a lot of driver optimization there. And you're gonna be playing at 4K, you might want those bigger VRAM buffers of the 3060 and also the B580. And so when it comes to new cards like these, Look at the results, pick what's best for you. Always do that, pick what's best for you in your current situation. And that said, I always do recommend taking a look at the used market to see what bargains you can pull off. The market in general, for instance, I recently picked up a 6700 XT 12 gigabyte for about 180-ish US dollars, which would make it, in my opinion, the best pick versus all these four GPUs because it has the performance and it has the specs to boot. And of course it came in at a much lower price point, but picking up used deals like that, it's not always the case where some people live, they can't get access to good deals, they may live in a remote area, I understand that, but it's certainly always worth taking a look at what you can get on the used market. Anyhow guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below what you think of these four different cards. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.